Hi friends, I am Dharmala Shri from Smart Leaders IAS. Consistency is the mantra of our preparation. So prepare con consistently and continuously. So hard work and uh, consistency bring you success. Let us move on to the article. So we will discuss articles from 15th February. Here we are going to say about two articles. One is about what can sanitation reduce stunting. That is the first article. And the second one is mind the perimeter. So first one is regarding sanitation and the stunting and the second one is about uh, vulnerabilities in the military uh, installments. Let us move on to the discussion now. So the first article, can sanitation reduce stunting? So we have our Swachh Bharat mission as a goal. By 2019, we ne uh, need to eradicate the open defecation and so we want to proclaim India as an open defecation free country in 2019. That is our Swachh Bharat mission which initiated in 2014. So we can expect so many questions from this area with respect to UPSC because we are almost in the midway and in the four and uh, by 2018 we can expect uh, the success and the limitations of Swachh Bharat mission itself because the target year is 2019 we can expect one question and the second question may be from 2016 in, in global hunger index as our rank was very poor, 97th rank in Global Hunger Index and obviously it was the question asked in UPSC prelims. So we can expect one question because the 2017 Global Hunger Index report, we slipped it to 100th position. So Global Hunger Index report consists of stunting, wasting everything, undernourishment and all. So here we can uh, expect a question. So and already in 2017, one question has asked in about WASH. WASH is nothing but water, sanitation and hygiene. It was a program by UNESCO. So let us move on to the article. Before we are go uh, going to see the article, we will see about two aspects, stunting and the uh, second one is WASH. So this is the article. So this article says that whether sanitation and stunting are correlated or not. So this is the art uh, article outline. So we will see what is WASH. I explained earlier, WASH is Water, Sanitation and Hygiene. It was a UNESCO program. The main aim of WASH is to protect the toddlers from fecal pathogens that are believed to be interfere with the growth. So toddlers should be protected from fecal pathogens that are believed to be interfere with the growth. This is the main aim of WASH. And how far WASH is getting succeeded, and, uh, this article is going to explain. And the next one we will see what is meant by stunting. So what is meant by stunting? Stunting is nothing but at height to age. With respect to age, how far height a child has achieved. So this is the first point. And India is a growth uh, home of 38% of children undernourished children. So here it is the world's second largest undernourished population with respect to children. Why stunting is so important? Because when the children get the age of two, we cannot reverse the undernourishment. So it is undernourished. We cannot activate the nourishment thing. Next one is undernourishment is always linked to the intelligence. So when the children is deprived of nourishment, I mean nutrition, and it is replicated in the intelligence level. And again, it is replicated in the workforce. And again, it is replicated in the healthy workforce and the brain power. So we cannot expect a nation which are full of demographic dividend with undernourishment. So this is the main concern for India as of now. India, uh, it is al always a land of paradoxes and here is another paradox because India is the second largest food producer and we are going for food security programs. We are producing surplus foods. Food security is our aim and mission. And here we are producing a second highest undernourished population. So this is the report from Global Hunger Index 2017. So this is again a paradox and it is a main concern for India. And critics used to say it is the Indian enigma. One said we are having a population and, uh, and growth. Another said we are producing a population with full of undernourishment and malnutrition. So next is we will see the crux of the article. So main crux of the article is one research institute, the research institute of compassionate economics, I repeat research institute of compassionate economics they finding uh, they find it some results here were based on the vast interventions in in all over the world not only in india because uh, uh, when compared to india 
other countries like Bangladesh, Kenya and all more improved in the vast related thing and because they reduce open defecation to a larger extent our neighbor Bangladesh they have reduced from 49% to 1% of open defecation free in 2016 so they have achieved enormously in sanitation aspect however the results are not productive as with respect to stunting and the sanitation because wash didn't make children taller this is the main findings of rice so um, interventions done by wash it has just improved the basic toilets to improved versions of toilets but it didn't correlate with the children to make taller why stunting is more uh, stunting and sanitation is connected because in unhygienic sanitation and uh, fecal bacteria will be uh, infected and the intestinal infection will come and through the diarrhea many uh, almost 5 million children in India every year it is getting died so because of these sanitation is considered as a prior important in reducing stunting so these are our findings from 1990s to 2013 that is why our intervention and in sanitation and to attack stunting so these are fecal bacteria especially Escherichia coli and other parasites which infected and then produce a and produce the fatal results and the disease, uh, disease results to the children. And the next one finding is a significant finding done by Dean Spears. He says that in 2013, Dean Spears, when he conducted experiments in India, he finds that population density countries like India and as well as Bangladesh, height and def open defecation all are interlinked. That is whenever a, popula a population density high countries, so it's a place, a uh, density higher density place and uh, uh, a height of the children which is getting reduced and uh, when whenever there is an open defecation is high because density when it is high defecation issues will be there so all three are interlinked so it is said when the density of the population is high defecation will be high and the height is reduced so these will be high and these will be high and the height will be reduced this is the findings of mr dean spears i repeat dean spears in 2013 so now this article shows that stunting is not related to sanitation so stunting is other phenomena because they are saying all the conventional experiments done by the so-called the economists they were it is not it is based on descriptive studies not based on the randomized conducted trials so descriptive studies is uh, doesn't have any broad based area so it is very limited based on that only we can assume assume that this sanitation and stunting is related and when we conducted randomized control trials bash is not effective to control the, to improve the stunted growth so this is the main outcome of this article so next others views that results about wash needs intergenerational years because inter one generation has needs to be passed we cannot expect the outcomes in terms in a very short term within a span of 15 years because millennium development goal we started this intervention so we cannot expect in the very short term um, about the final outcome of wash so this is the first one come and uh, they are also saying that even in bangladesh and kenya we have we are improving toilets but contamination is so high because urban waters and the water they are using are all contaminated with so many other things so we cannot say that intervention is not improved so there are opinions that wash is not improving the child child growth i mean uh, Im not improving the making the children taller and there are other views that whatever the uh, conduct uh, experiments conducted is not enough to prove wash is not effective so let us move on to the next part so this is the intervention of wash so how far it is going to affect our policy change that is Swachh Bharat Mission in India that is our main focus area now. So how this VASH intervention and the ch children growth it is uh, impacting India's Swachh Bharat Mission. Here we announced a policy change which is mainly aimed at behavioral change. However, uh, National Family Health Survey 2015 and 2016 and report says that whatever we are claiming to be uh, achieved as a success of Swachh Bharat Mission, it is actually not replicated in the results because rural India still it is open defecation around 52 percent of the rural India it is still following the open defecation 
and it is not improved till 20, uh, 2011 because it is the data are showing very similar to 2011 data and uh, still in the uh, urban also following 11 person open defecation so experts are saying that focusing on construction of toilets that is building the number of toilets increasing the number of toilets is not enough because increasing the number of toilets is nowhere related to the cultural attitude and the mindset of the people so finance is a major thing but it is not the only thing to remove the open defecation in india so we need behavioral change campaign that is the attitude and the mindset of the people needs to change to eliminate the open defecation in india so what is the way forward here this book where india goes is done by a nobel laureate uh, dean space and uh, diane so they are saying that at uh, india policy concerns need to link the social inequality and the open defecation so sanitation and the social inequality are the main criteria so it accepts that poverty is also a criteria but poverty is not the main when compared to social inequality because still india following the manual scavenging even after so many acts passed by the government and the supreme court direction so we need to take care of this area and uh, for upsc we can expect a question from a question from mains this area also with respect to manual scavenging next one is water and the governance and uh, Often governor, uh, government is reporting that water is a main issue in uh, removing this open defecation. But however, uh, when compared to Pakistan, Bangladesh and other countries, they are so much of water scarce than India. They are doing eff effectively in tackling the open defecation. That is, they are showing improvements in sanitation. So why can't we? That is the other question. So this myth also fail. That is water and the governance water issue is not the main issue with the scars of water we can do a unfollow effective sanitation and the governance part needs to be improved mainly governance part has to be improved in uh, one area that is contamination and the waste management in the cities and the uh, urban circles and the rural area so this is the first one because contamination of water contamination of sewage into the drinking water or providing clean and safe uh, drinking water or installing RO water, it is a responsibility of the area, local governments, municipality and the panchayat. So they can take uh, effective steps in this area. And the next one is uh, researchers when they have conducted research in Chattisgarh, they found that it is not only because of toilets, because stunting is a more complex phenomena, it needs food also. So food provision needs to be provided by the government and if they are taking this mission seriously. This is the another opinion given by the researchers. And the next one is, I have mentioned earlier, the waste management system, whether it is a landfill or it is a incineration practices or it is pyrolysis needs to be taken care. And the next I have mentioned here is stunting is not only uh, with respect to sanitation because so many others are linked with stunting. We can say the women's health, mother's health, if she is anemic, it can be replicated in the stunting. And the second one is food provisions, what she is eating and what the children is eating and the genetics issue all are need to be taken care of when uh, for the children's growth and uh, generally asians are, are not taller than the western countries this is also need to be taken care of because when we are whenever we are using standards we are keeping the western models as a standard and we we are not making a path that is equality part with the indian standard this is a, an also a concern with respect to the standards set by the western nations and the next one is why bangladesh is able to improve the sanitation there is a one important thing that is empowerment of women he, there women are ac given access to the money and I, I mean economics and they have taken part in the decision making because garment industry and the self-help groups in the bangladesh are uh, giving effective place to the women of bangladesh so so the power of women and the empowerment of women gives a way for improving the sanitation is the next link. So friends, whenever we are writing a question for this sanitation issue, please ensure that at women is related and the food pro provisions and the waste management and the contamination part, whether it is a pollution for part of land or other thing, uh, social aspect of the open defecation. So ensures that your answer should be in a 360 degree view. So we know that at uh, Mahatma's vision of open defecation tree and uh, he wants to Im remove, eradicate the manual scavenging. So here is the line of Mahatma. 
the cause of ma many of our disease is the condition of our lavatories so, and our bad habit of disposing excreta anywhere and everywhere it is uh, written by mahatma in 1925 so achieving swachh bharat mission is a reality provided we are intervening in a right way and attacking our age old hierarchies so we need to improve this area prepare well this area it is highly expecting area for our upsc this year prelims mains and even an essay of mains as well so next article we are going to see is about mind the perimeter these are the references i have taken for this article next we are going to see about at mind the perimeter it is about the security vulnerabilities in our military installations so this area it is usually security and internal security part terrorism we can uh, expect in the gs3 and uh, also we can expect essay related question and uh, for interview candidates you all know that we are aware of the uh, sinjuban attack so it is highly related now uh, so we uh, already 2017 and 2016 two questions have asked in uh, related to this area scourge of terrorism is increasing and the next one is border management now we can uh, expect area why in now terrorists are emboldened to take actions directly on military installation part of a big strategy or our uh, security vulnerabilities are very weak so these are the areas we can expect and also whether zero infiltration is possible or not we can expect this type of questions also and what is the reason for the success of continuous infiltrations in the military installation so have a idea about why they are attacking on the military in installations and uh, what are our reactions to this attacks we responded with surgical strikes we have taken to the un fora that is our external minister told every time when we are going with the flare we are welcomed with the gun so please uh, follow the indian uh, government stands on these cases now so i have mentioned what is the article repeated success of terrorists in infiltrating high security military complexes so this is the area of concern for us and the crux of the article so in feb 15 we came to know that but our sunjuan military installation i mean sunjuan military station in kashmir in jammu and kashmir was attacked by the infiltrators so it exposes the vulnerabilities in the perimeter security it shows that sunjuan attack shows that only we have made scant progress by keep, for keeping our military installation vulnerable from the attacks so it it shows the other vulnerable another vulnerability and another our lack of preparedness after this uri attack and the patan kota attack so the main crux of the article is um, after uh, patan kota attack air base attack in uh, 2016 we have appointed a uh, appointed a committee to look out the vulnerabilities so it the, it was under the head of lieutenant general philip campus so he took in a security or audit for all the major military installation and provide so much of recommend so many recommendations to the government and and uh, he recommended immediately we need to upgrade our infrastructure facility and government also provided fund around 1482 crores to implement the projects so infrastructure needs to be completed after uh, the sunjuan attack our uh, uh, defense minister uh, told the implementation has to be get complete by the end of this year so but however implementations in india are taken not taken on a permanent basis every time ad hoc measures are taken that is what the main crux of this article we need to have a clear and the broad policy about this about the implementations and given on the military thing because committee recommended we need to take two pronged approaches short term and the long term but it is not had taken by the government seriously that is why we are exposing to the other vulnerability so success but however successful attack doesn't mean that our soldiers are uh, not doing anything in the border they are doing their work effective and better still we are having some loopholes in our our uh, procedures and that we need to attack right now so what we need to do protect like the committee recommendation says that but uh, there are some ambiguities in the chain of command so that it was reflect reflected in uri attack like uh, as well as well as nagota attack so it was happened in 2016 and 2017 area so ambiguity in the chain of commands needs to be replaced so clear uh, chain of commands has to be followed and the next one is i have mentioned here like lack of infrastructure so lack of infrastructure that is why the government have recommended some um, 1487 uh, crores rupees 
and uh, needs to be implemented by this year next one is standard operating procedures is not clearly followed in this uh, area of command so we need to formulate the standard operating procedure and we need to follow that make sure this guidelines are uh, followed in every stage in the command structure and the next one is respond to intelligence and we inquired after the uri attack or nagohta attack or patan kut attack intelligence was given but whether it is a generic or a specific intelligence it is a question mark how we are responding to that intelligence is also another question mark and how far we are developing our human intelligence report that is an another area so uh, specific intelligence and the generic intelligence and as well as the uh, human intelligence and how much we are ready um, with the technology uh, technology and the intelligence so this these are the broad areas with respect to the intelligence whenever we are advancing with the technology the probability of error is getting reduced so introduction of more new technology is must and necessary in the military establishments and the next one is smart fencing it not only the uh, not only by the campus committee already madhukar gupta committee they have also mentioned about or uh, fencing the borders in all the sites because uh, our borders are so vulnerable whether it is coastal or it is with the land borders so uh, fencing the borders is must and the very prior that is why uh, our eastern borders are more vulnerable to the insurgents and the western borders even though we have done the bordering we are still facing the infiltrations so rather than the normal fencing smart fencing is a way of future and the next one and committee recommended that is there any uh, need to put the specialized forces to protect the bases yes we need to do that if we if we are needed so specialized forces to protect the fences and the military bases especially so these two are on the high high need so these are the short term and the long term um, uh, recommendations by the committee so in order to protect the military installations from the vulnerability and to keep the borders safe we need a sensible and the dynamic solutions is a need of the sar so our solution should not be stagnant and we we have already in, installed and predictability in our uh, military doctrine dealing with the pakistan so it should be more sensible and more dynamic and respond to the challenges present in the thing and uh, next one is soldiering is a zero error profession so it is uh, not expected as a desire but it is a must of everyone so we are expecting from our soldiers there should be zero error whether it is possible yes it is possible with zero infiltration provided our checks are prior yes it is possible when our shields are ready we can uh, fight with the sword and when our shield is not ready we cannot fight with the sword so prepare well all the very best thank you have a great day i hope you are all busy with the prelims preparation and the whole idea of this editor editorial discussion is to reduce your hindu editorial timing so that you can advance towards prelims also so hope you all doing well all the very best thank you have a great day